What are the foods where the pesticides well, are likely to be worst? Breakfast cereals that contain oats. Okay, that's incredibly surprising. I thought you were going to give me a fruit. Tell me so about what, oats. So oats, uh, because they're uh, often um, raised in, in damp countries, they are sprayed just before they're harvested to dry them out. Okay. And so this gives them masses amounts. And because they're wet, they absorb all, all that glyphosate. And so their levels are five to ten times more than many other, other grains. So that is something that is not, not particularly a health food that I think uh, people should go out of their way if they do love oats. And I know you used to be a oat, big oat, oat uh, eater, although you're not anymore. Um, you know, and you can afford it. Either switch to something else or, or go jump, particularly if you're trying to give your kids something which you think is healthy. Um, I think that you could be giving them high levels of uh, particularly this herbicide, uh, uh, glyphosate. Rice is another one that came up, uh, interestingly, uh, in, in some surveys as being um, quite high in pesticides. And we do know that if you get certain areas of India and um, Pakistan do a problem with runoff of arsenic into rice paddy fields. So, you know, if you're getting cheap rice from certain places, um, you know, you may be ingesting a lot of chemicals. And in general, uh, fruits and vegetables that are contain a lot of water uh, will tend to absorb these chemicals more than others. And where they particularly attract insects as well. So cucumbers, pears, nectarines, these tend to have uh, quite high uh, concentrations. And everyone loves strawberries. I love strawberries. But in tests in the US and the UK, they commonly get tested as being above the safety levels. So we have these standard safety levels. And this levels. again for these herbicides you're talking about? Uh, this is pesticides, pesticides and, and herbicides. So these are the insecticides and the purpose so of the organophosphates and all the and the, the glyphosates, really high levels. That's the sort of thing you should be, be wary of. That if you, you know, if you have you know strawberries just once a year, it's probably not worth worrying about it. But if this is like part of your uh, regular thing, just see if you know you can get organic strawberries because. Or presumably swap to a different fruit that has lower yes. levels. And other berries. I mean, you know, I now. I didn't used to, but I now try and get organic uh, blueberries if I can. Uh, you can often get them frozen, interestingly, they, and they're not very expensive if you you buy the frozen organic berries and you stick them in the freezer. I was just thinking about this this morning. Um, I get a lot of organic tinned food and a lot of organic frozen food because after podcasts that we've done in the past – where I, I've discovered that actually like frozen vegetables and um, tinned vegetables are, are good, we now cook a lot of that at home. And what's interesting is that, you know, the, the, the price of still like organic um, uh, tinned beans is still incredibly cheap. So is that one of the areas that, uh, again, Absolutely, you could... yeah. I know you picked up on three really good tips for people is, yeah, organic frozen food is, is really good. They don't have the same costs because it obviously it probably costs more to transport organic food because it does go off quicker. So you've got to be much faster. You can't just leave it around in warehouses for uh, as long as possible. You know, we don't tend to store them in those chemical bags and things. Um, so that's a good tip about frozen foods, canned foods. I think beans do come up in some surveys as being high in pesticides. So buying, paying, you know, 10p extra or whatever for um, an organic bean uh, can uh, is is good value compared to the fresh one. It's all a bit scary. You're talking about like these pesticides and herbicides. What can I what can I do if I've if I've got this? Can I you know can I wash this? You know, I was always brought up by my mother. Interestingly, like I should wash the fruit. Washing helps, but it doesn't and get it down to organic to levels. That. <laughs> but it doesn't get it down anywhere near to organic levels. Okay. So you remove a little bit of it, but often it. And you can peel them. That will remove some more. In some, particularly these, you know, that's probably one reason to peel cucumbers, uh, which I never used to do. By the way, I'm not, you know, too lazy. But if you can't get an organic one, you know, probably peeling it gets rid of perhaps half. But you still, um, a lot of it might go beyond the skin. So another little trick is, 
if you're washing stuff, add some sodium bicarbonate, baking soda. That is very good at removing. Does that take a lot more of this yes, away? A lot better than just water. So that's a little tip that doesn't cost it to cost anything. But there are certain fruits and vegetables that are actually pretty safe. Zoe's favorite fruit, the avocado, is uh, which we know is pretty generally healthy, seems to absorb the herbicides and, and insecticides on the skin. So you don't eat the skin, so you're eating the flesh, and that's pretty free of any, any nasty problems. Similarly, an onion, you peel away, you don't eat the onion skin, so that's really well protected. Um, and uh, there, there are other examples like that that are more the drier, the drier fruits and vegetables that don't absorb the water that have got a, a skin. Mango is another one. They're actually uh, pretty good because, again, you're not eating the skin. So there, there's a, a, a list of, of ones you don't have to worry about. And there are lists. Uh, in the U.S. has a list of these. Um, each year that they, they do produce a, a list of the 15 best and the 15 worst uh, offenders uh, that people can look at, although each country is going to vary. And... Locally, you know, the amount of uh, spraying and things will vary a lot. We know that certain parts of the UK, just like if you live in uh, Norfolk, the spraying is is enormous. So it's very hard to avoid some of that on most of the produce, whereas other bits of the country, um, the produce has much less. And I definitely have this vision that this is particularly bad in the States. Is this true? Rules are much laxer in the States. Uh, they allow more organophosphate use, more, um, more chemicals that are banned in Europe. And I think there's generally much less uh, checking of these levels. So the levels are generally higher in the US. And we've talked about antibiotic levels. They're, they're also much higher still. And uh, the general chemicals used in, in agriculture, it's still a bit the Wild West. So your differential to moving to organic is going to be even higher there then? It is, yes. And there are, there are different big differences between countries as well and the pricing as well. It's interesting there are many countries in Europe where perhaps 25% of the, of the produce is organic, places like Sweden, Austria, etc. In this country, we're probably below 3%. In the UK, I think it's uh, similarly low levels in the US, but luckily it is really growing fast. So it, it, it is sort of doubling uh, every 10 years. So I think it's a movement that's not going to go away. And um, I think, you know, it's something that everyone needs to know about. Well, Tim, you're definitely convincing me that I should be buying more organic food next week than I was last week. Um, we asked this question right at the beginning, and I just want to get the the clear answer to it. We said, you know, if there was one food that you were going to buy um, organically, what what would it be? And I'd love to get the answer. It would probably be tomatoes, actually, because I eat tomatoes nearly every day. And so uh, I think... To me, that's more important. I was going to say strawberries because I, I love strawberries, but I don't have them every day, so I'm, I'm less concerned about it. So I think it would be um, – that would be my main answer because uh, it, it's you've got to think of that long-term exposure of, of foods and getting high-quality tomatoes. I've – tasted Italian and Spanish ones, and not only they taste better, but, you know, if you can get – the organic versions of those, they are they are pretty incredible. But again, you can get a can of organic uh, tomatoes for not much more than the uh, non-organic version. So it's, it's about people thinking for themselves about what they would change, what do they have regularly, what could they improve that would make a much bigger difference uh, to their long-term health. <laughs> 